Hey there, what's left of Dengar's Chew here? Today's video is about painting Renko and is proudly sponsored by MarieEngine.com. Alright, uh, yes, I missed last week's video. It's been a huge fortnight, so time to bring you guys up to speed. When the underside of the hull was sandblasted, there were sections where the boat was sitting on its pads like it is now. Those weren't sandblasted and as a result, all the epoxy's fallen off there so easily. So I'm gonna get the little turku wheel with the tungsten tips, rough all this up and start getting some epoxy primer back on those six spots and the new bits of steel that I've put in here, for example. See here, it's now roughed up enough with a profile for the epoxy to stick properly this time. Do that everywhere, rinse, repeat. First thing I do to get ready to paint is start masking up all the uprights on the stainless. Just going to put masking tape around, we're painting here, paint around a line, leave this all polished stainless above. The first couple of coats put on the outside of the boat were a high build epoxy primer. Once that was on and dried, started sanding it back, ready to put the top coat on. Also sanded the old urethane top coat so the new one keyed in properly with it, given it's been on too long to form a chemical bond. Okay, primer is pretty much on. This is the paint I'm using for the deck and the inside of the bulwarks. It's a light grey. I had been told that anything with a component of black will get warm, but I've also been told that the beiges and the alternatives look really dirty really quickly. So this is what we're going with. I can see already stirring it. It's incredibly thick and uh, really tough. So really good for, you know, dropping tools, working, etc. You can see how thick it is stirring it. I'm just stirring the base before I stir the hardener. Otherwise, when we pour out four litres or whatever, we won't get a proper mix of the constituents. But the other paint I used, the primer, you know, you'd get little, uh, you know, vortices or whatever in it. This is just too thick to even do that. You know, very good deck paint, I think. Anyway, gonna get in, start getting this on. You can see how thick it is when you pull the stirrer out. The drips don't even find a level again. They just sit on the surface. Hopefully the sugarcane burn off doesn't send any ash this way. Sometimes bits of black ash fall when they do these burn offs. Because I'm about to paint. It's not a good combination. Time to put the dark gray on. No more blue. This is the door from the side of the wheelhouse and it's actually a slight parallelogram. Only about three degrees out of square, but it's pretty critical for it to close and seal up properly. I am making the new frame out of this stainless steel. So let's cut this, uh, say 43 and a half degrees to give us a bevel that gives us an 87. And then the other end, we need a bevel that gives us 93. I am now going to jump into the engine bay and get a few things sorted out. Another optically interesting job I want to do is change all the batteries to be lengthways so no batteries are behind others. 
it also makes it easier to put the house bank 12 volt house bank in parallel these are the starting batteries in series behind there's the 12 volt house bank in parallel down here is the lithium which is 24 volt single unit it's also time to give the Detroit a service before we head off. So I installed a new oil pump that attaches to the bottom of the sump so we can get the old oil out. Looks like this filter holds about two litres. It's amazing. We also have a care package from Adrian to install. What do we got in here? Yeah. Looks like a Cummins. Oh no, it's a starter for the Detroit. The uh, original starter got stuck on. Uh, a bit of smoke came out. I actually left. It's been running the entire trip up the coast. Hasn't missed a beat. But Adrian got this one for me. We're going to install this and rebuild the other one as a spare just to be on the safe side. So we'll throw this in as well. All right, squeezed in the engine bay this time with a battery in the GoPro. Nothing better than squeezing back out to grab one. Uh, all right, let's take, look like three quarter inch nuts on this starter. Take the positive and negative, battery switch is off. So we aren't dangling a positive lead around the bilge. Very unlike me to think ahead so far. Must be getting old. It's kind of nice just to be doing a little job like a starter motor. It feels quite pleasant after all the massive needle gunning, grinding, sanding, all those really big jobs. Pretty tiring. Not the easiest bolt to get to, but I've certainly seen worse. I'm not jealous of Damien's Cummins, but I am jealous of how much space he's got around it. Look at him with his big boat and his big wheelhouse. <sighs> Kiwis. I think that broke it. As in, started it, not broke it, broke it. <laughs> I'm going to have to angle these oil cooler lines down to get the starter out. Oh dear, oh well. Another reason to uh, do this job now is if you did it in an emergency it could be rough. Better to find out now than in a four metre sea. My adjustable flogging spanner. Oh, it's coming a bit more easily which is something. This one down, tighten it up, that's better. Well, I'm glad we found this out under relatively calm, simple conditions. Another really good reason to install your spares before you need them. These two hoses just go up to the remote oil filter here. Uh, all right, now we can get the starter out. Get this beast out of the way. Like, lucky I'm so big and muscly. Uh, all right. Hopefully this will make with the ring gear all right and not give us too much hassle. Looking forward to getting home after the cruising. You know, I'm looking forward to that too. And I'll do some cruising vids. Not so much tourist vids as technical vids for seamanship type stuff, which hopefully some of you enjoy. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. And then when we get back, Got a whole lot of uh, pure mechanical vids planned that I'm looking forward to making.
some outboard, some diesel. So, Damien, how would you get to your starter if you had to change it? I'd, I'd just stroll casually into my large <laughs> to glacial, palatial um, engine room, pull yep. up a seat. <laughs> but you've got to reach all the way across to get to it. This engine room's actually the same size as Renko. It's just Cummins don't make so much of a wasted space out of it. <laughs> you know, Renko's actually very average length for a 30-foot boat. <laughs> While I'm waiting for the dew to dry so I can do another coat of paint, I'm going to work on the drawers. They're essentially bottle openers with some additional storage. I am moving the railings because we're having two face one way, one face the other, which meant the railings were staggered. So I'm moving them to all be in a line. Then I'm going to use a bit of this box stainless to make a rail that links the three of them together. Then that railing is then getting bolted to the top of the engine hatch and the table is going on top of the drawers. Put some imaginary Loctite on and then tighten them up. All right, 14.25, two of. Plan now is we are going to drill some holes in the top. Let's go, say, here, two per box, I guess. And that's going to allow us to bolt these down onto these boxes. I'm going lazy. I hate drilling steel and cutting it for that matter. Welding is fun though. So. I was originally going to drill a hole so I'd get a socket and then bolt through the bottom side. Then I thought, why not just put a rivet nut in? At least then you're just using a normal metal, you know, drill bit rather than a hole saw, easier. And then I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter. The nut can actually be on the outside. It doesn't have to be rebated. The gap won't matter. So I'm just going to weld some stainless nuts on and use that. No drilling or cutting at all. Okay, next job is to drill four holes in the engine hatch that I'm going to use to bolt the drawers on. Now I've got the holes drilled in the hatch. I'm drilling down through those into the stainless tube to make sure they all line up perfectly. Do this one first so it can't move, do the rest. I'm not going to tighten it too much because if I do it'll rock up. I'll get them all started and I'll get them even until we've got a slight flex in that box and that'll hold everything rock solid. Time came then to cut the tabletop to size and also to do a test start on the Detroit before being dropped back into the water. I have the lid off the sea strainer and the sea cock closed. So I'm gonna put the hose, poke it in the sea strainer and then try and get it down the intake hose. It'll fill the sea strainer because the sea cock's closed and then just overflow into the bilge. Take the strainer out too, so we can get the hose in. All right, cable tied on here, let's go turn the tap on. If we had just poked the hose up the raw water intake, most of it would have just flowed straight back out again. All right, that seemed to work all right. Not getting any taco though. Low voltage detected, bank one, 10.5 volts. What's that bank? Not sure. Hmm, what's going on battery wise? Let's check all these batteries. With the batteries, I realized I'd turned my solar off to do a particular task and then never turned it back on again. So that was nice and simple. After that, I moved on to repairing the swim ladder, which is something I'd broken quite a while ago. The fun job after that was wet sanding the old anti-foul off. How much you can actually leave on? 
Boats are a lot of fun. Everyone should have a boat. <laughs> this is a part of boats you don't see, From eh? From the moment you buy it to the moment you uh, are <laughs> just fun, 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 non-stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're evil. Look at you giggling. No, this, is, this is great. <laughs> I've enjoyed every minute of seeing this guy do his boat. <laughs> All right, have a shower. Yeah, rightly so. Enjoy. T minus two days now, and four coats of anti fail to get on. Got the uh, old anti fail sander yesterday. Just going to mask up the waterline. Start painting. Still early, coffee first, sun's coming up. Then we'll get into it. Here are the doors. They've had their last coat of paint now. Time to put the new rubbers in. Windows have been cleaned, or the glass has been cleaned. Down here is the platform the fridge goes on. Still a bit of masking tape around the bottom. I welded some feet on instead of uh, having the stays holding it. Damien and I found this propeller at the scrapyard for like 150 bucks or something crazy. Bigger than my prop. I think the same shaft size. It's much easier to have this cut down than it is to build that one up. But as Damien pointed out, we don't have a huge amount of clearance here. But it is tempting for me. I don't know. An option would be to come down here and then I could actually put like a little bit of a skeg, like an outboard type skeg, so move the strengthening from here to the underside. The other thing is it could come right to the back. There's a bit of a weak point here where it's got no support. So if I took it out from here and had it come, it could actually come right to here, which is sort of tempting. One of those tricky jobs that just had to be done was putting all the new rubbers into the window to replace the old seals. The seals I bought in Sydney I thought were a better quality of seal, but these will get us home. I may replace them again down the track. All the new window seals are in now. Got to clean the windows still. Front deck, uh, still finishing a little bit of paint around the winch, but getting there. Roof's looking pretty good too. One of the local guys here at the yard, Dale, his uh, stepson is a glazier, lent us the tool for putting the locking strip in. So I think I'll donate the leftover uh, rubber and uh, locking strip to him. Because I'm moving the fridge from here to over here, I need to redo the wiring. I've decided I'm going to put an Anderson plug on the high side of the deck with some waterproofing so that I can easily unplug it because I may want to take it ashore, I may want to put it in the Land Rover, I figure it keeps it very versatile. This is the plug that it comes with. Just cut the end off. I'm gonna put the Anderson plug on here. Finally being convinced I'm better off putting a little bit of dielectric grease in before crimping. I'm gonna use this factory Anderson lead to extend it. So I'm gonna pop the pins out. That way I can feed it down through the conduit, put the plug back on at the other end. The time then came to lift the engine hatch and the drawers up onto the deck so we could put the tabletop in place. We're on the go your way, we're on the work down. I'm gonna let the thing down slightly. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah, just be careful. Yeah. yeah, I just need to get a little bit of room on there. Yeah. Hey, take it good. If it looks that clear, we can you know, just lay it down onto the let this tip away. Yeah. Can you get it off that edge? Yeah, there you go. Oh, good. Yeah, there you go. Oh. How do we lower this? Oh, we uh, uh, yeah, the hard way, unfortunately. Let's just drop it to the ground. Uh, hang on, hang on, let me spin it first because it goes. Oh. If we drop it to the ground, we can drop this down, yeah. and then we can pick it up and swing it around more. I reckon if we lower it, it won't take as much. Just to we no, moved no, it from we'll just, there to there. We'll just shunt it. We'll yeah, it's fine. Around. Yeah, 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 very close. Your uh, things worked well. Good. And the eyes didn't pull out. Oh, that's a bonus. <laughs> in there or not.
Bigger. 40 little bit. Look at that. Done. Just like a bought one. Whoop, whoop. Thank you. This is the box stainless steel I'm going to be using at the bottom of the door and this is the trimming made out of a sort of recycled polyboard that won't rot and doesn't need painting so I'm pretty pleased about that. I'm going to drill a pilot hole through the board into the steel so they're lined up perfectly. Then we're going to use one of Damien's special little uh, drill tap combos. This is quite thick wall steel. Once we've got this drill and tap, I'm going to weld it on and then we can screw the sort of outside trimming onto the steel. Here are the new door tracks. Still got to figure out some sort of sliding mechanism, thinking like a thin strip of uh, high density polyethylene, Teflon, something like that, even bronze. But they're there, they're working, they're back in. After all the painting was finished, I had to run the polishing disc back over the stainless to get all the paint off that had dripped, been on my hands, etc. Here's the Kuma mounted on the back rail. You can also drop the legs down, pull this down as a quick release, take it off the hook and pop it on the bench. But I think it's going to be a pretty good spot for it. Got the OBG bottle mounted on the transom there. Very nice. Looking forward to firing that up. Next job, let's go change out that blown anchor light for an LED replacement, finally. The afternoon got pretty windy, so apologies for the wind noise in the mic. The flathead bolts holding the old fitting in place were corroded, bent, etc. So I used my favourite uh, flathead screwdriver, which is the angle grinder, to get those undone. Best screwdriver I've got. It's not awesome, but we do have one bolt into our new anchor light. It's feeling pretty solid. The reason I'm not super fussed is one of my plans when I get back is to make a whole new aluminium mast for Renko. This has crimp connectors with heat shrink and then self amalgamating tape over the top. Also here, I've drilled and tapped two holes for a pad eye, which gives us a core to the flag spine. It's quite windy now, as you can probably hear. So let's put a flag up. For my flags, I've just got the pulley on the mast, cleat on the wheelhouse here, and then a line with two sister clips. They can either attach to each other, or you have them on your flags as well. These clips just slot in through each other like that. Do that on both ends. Then, you've just got to pull the right end up. If the mast was a little bit taller relative to the stage, I think it would work well. Better than nothing. So here we go, here's the uh, finished product. A few little jobs to go though before we launch. Got to uh, put prop speed on, anti-foul on the transducers, sonar transducers, a little bit of electrical, but definitely getting there. Well, thanks for watching. We launch on Wednesday now, so a few days to go until we're back in the water, but it gives me a chance to finish up these last few jobs, get Red Dwarf back together, etc. After that, we're heading further north up towards the Great Barrier Reef, so I'll catch you then, see ya.